we think about his stance, his movement, his, his rotation, his edging, and his pressure. Yeah. yeah, you got a little bit of the soft focus there. He's on pretty much the same bindings. Same boot too, I believe. So yeah, he's a little bit better with his, his movement. His feet tend to pass in the fall line, so that enables him to use his legs a little bit more effectively to twist the skis. He's got a, quite a nice angulated position because of that. And his pressure on both feet generally looked quite balanced. He wasn't feeling any sudden changes and so on. So yeah, the you know the thing you would do was go, hey, let's take it next level maybe. Let's try and get a little bit more speed, a little bit more edge, and move towards the calf performance. Beyond the steer performance. Yeah. So, yeah, thank you. I'm nice. um, happy to chat about anything if you've got any questions. And yeah, that's my email if you, if you want to get in touch with me at any, at any time. So, yeah, that's our skills and our performances. So, we're you know, analyzing and teaching skiing with the skills and building up to the desired performances, depending on how we blend the skills. And just at the end there, we had a little bit of our you know, in-depth movement analysis. We were out on the hill trying to keep it quite simple, which we do with our guests. But yeah, we tried to do a little bit more in-depth in training in uh, our instructors so they can you know, think skill by skill and you know what's causing what. This guy's slipping everywhere. Why? Why? Is that because he doesn't know how to tip over, or is he rotating? Is his movement not balanced? So it's just getting the instructors to to see those uh, relationships and videos. Annie. Couple of topics for you. Yep. First relates to the heels up. Heels down topic. Yep. Um, in New Zealand, when we're doing our introductory part of the lesson, walking around, getting used to being on the skis and so on, we do look to see whether or not they are in the habit of standing on two feet for a while in between their feet passing and yep. positively encourage people to like, hey, have a go, see what it's like with the heel up a little bit, with the heel right down, with the heel up a lot give them a bit of variety at that very early stage. And one of the reasons is the variety of conditions in New Zealand um, that allow for a variety of lead change types and so on. Um, and in the clinic so far, in the USA clinic, we had a good example where we were getting to the scissor lead changes. Um, it was Keith encouraging us to think of having both heels up as we scissor for more um, adaptability in the bumps. And then in the Slovenia clinic <coughs> yesterday afternoon, we had Yanni encouraging us to use both heels up um, as we try and take a much faster carve in line down the fall line. And his racing background, he said he was finding all the time that in Talamark racing, he really needed both heels up at the change in order to get quickly to the new edges and so on. Yep. So that's the summary of what I've heard about heels up, heels down, in addition to the ones we've already mentioned. Um, anybody got any other quick comments on that before I move to my second topic, if nobody else yeah. has a topic? <laughs> it's just definitely more the lower levels where encouraging the heels just for that stability. Mm. Good so. Andy, <clears throat> more of a question uh, on your comment heels up or down, is it more of an outcome or is it something that we're trying to do? Heels up or down can be both in my opinion, outcome as well as process. Um, what do you mean? 
Well, I mean, I, I think it's, again, <clears throat> if we're trying to be situational in our teaching, both with the, the snow condition, the skier, the, uh, the turn shape, the level of performance, I think both can apply. But it's, uh, I would say, in a lot of cases, it's such a refined movement that it, uh, I would say, in a lot of cases, there's bigger blocks of the body that I would probably tend to gravitate towards first. You need to support that analysis as well. In different parts of it, it's a very tiny focus at present at all, and then in a particular task, it's a much bigger focus to try. It's not just the Great. Thank you. I'll jump in there. Um, maybe relating to the um, um, here, to the specifically to the slides that I did. Uh, Obviously, that's an ideal in these terms. Uh, it doesn't mean, as Sam was saying, that we won't um, do passages with both heels down um, at all. That's, that, not that that's misunderstood. Uh, I think, though, where we're coming from, why we think, we believe that the heels, I mean, it's not something we'll look at really in detail. The place where they do look at it really in detail uh, it's a shame, I think Jazz is not here, is in the World Cup races, if you get both heels down, that's a second penalty, right? Yep. So that does come a little bit from there on one side, but maybe more generally, why is kind of the optimal, like the heels would be slightly up, or no. a lot up, depending on how, how, how high you get going across, because one foot is ahead of the center of mass and the other is behind the center of mass and if both move simultaneously then the logical conclusion will be that they will be both uh, hit up but that doesn't mean that it has to be so all of the time when you're actually doing it so that's where it comes from let's see uh, uh, you, you don't, process I don't, I don't know if that makes sense to you yeah you don't have to look far though fred when yeah. you look at classic skiing cross country yeah uh, when your recovery leg is passing through and is matching your uh, your glide leg, you'll often see heels up, and even in double pull in classic and skate as well. But again, it's such a refined movement that you know a lot of times it's it's because of it's an outcome, and the two are you know without a doubt related. And one's the mother of the other. <coughs> anyway, thanks. Yeah, I mean, I thought higher performances, we're not too concerned about where your heels are. It's just these <coughs> lower performance turns. We're encouraging that stability because, you know, quite often, well, for the newer skiers, it's hard. Well, think about reset, you know both feet coming back on the skis. There's that moment of stability as they're getting into the new telemark. It's uh, beneficial, I think. Yeah. Yeah, any others? See, Mike, yep. I really loved um, learning from you on this occasion. And once before, I've been to Australia Telemark Clinic, and there, for the Australian system, um, the concept of constant pressure turns was brought up, and it was an engaging concept at the time, and really good to practice. And I found it extremely useful when I choose to use it in my telemarketing, the concept that there is always constant pressure ironing out that snow. Uh, I'm not saying I do it all the time when I telemark, but I found it very useful on occasion. It also allows for the concept of um, constant and gradual lead changes and constant and gradual edging, all those other movements blending into the same idea of incremental. Do you still have at some stage this kind of topic of constant pressure turns in the Australian system? Um, sort of, yeah. generally just in the lower levels, mm -hmm. yeah. In the higher levels, yeah, you're definitely going to feel a lot more pressure on the outside as you're inclining and angulating. So this is just the steered performance, 
setting the foundation of balancing evenly on both feet in the telemark movement, and then later on you can start to think about feeling the front a little bit more at a higher performance, which we have to, we have to make sure that leg's stronger. Anybody? You all look tired. Thirsty. <laughs> Thirsty. Let's have a beer then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs>